Hello, and welcome to Craft Camp. Today we are going to be making these juniper sprig threaded cards that we painted ourselves. So let's get started. I use these tools and materials to make this card. First off, we've got this chipboard that comes in our craft pack. This is nice and thick and it's gonna hold up well against a few layers of paint. I've also printed off the template and I have an awl and this little pad that I'm just gonna punch right into. You can also do this on a carpet or something that you don't mind just little holes going into. I've got some double stick tape, but you can also use regular tape as well as my nice chunky scissors ready to go. For paint colors, I have a few different options. For my example card, I went with this blue and red and this light blue color scheme, but I think for this next one, I'm going to use the green and dark blue. I've also picked out this nice thick barreled watercolor brush that's going to hold quite a bit of water, as well as a little cup of water to do some painting. I have my hot glue to seal it all together. And of course, we can't forget our embroidery thread. I went with these two lighter gray greens that I think will stand off really nicely against a darker toned painted background. All right, let's get started. For our first step, we're going to go ahead and line up our template on this chipboard. Once it's lined up, I'm going to just tape the edges. For this double stick tape, I'll just make sure I tape it in this area along the side, or you can tape it on either side with regular tape. I'm going to tape this on all four sides, just so the template doesn't come loose while I'm cutting it out. Once all four sides are taped down, I'm going to move this over to my felting mat or my soft surface. I'll place the juniper sprig right over that, and we're just gonna take our awl and we're going to punch each one of these gray dots. I'm not gonna go all the way through with the awl. Try to keep these holes on the smaller side. This is my favorite part of this project. I think it's so satisfying. You could also use your regular needle for this if you wanted, but I like that this awl has a little handle for me to grip. Almost done. Perfect. Once that's all done, we're going to go ahead and cut out around the sides of this template. You'll wanna be careful when you're doing this because once it's disconnected from the sides, it's not gonna be taped down anymore. I'll start off just by cutting straight down the middle. This chipboard is a little difficult to cut through since it's on the thicker side, so I've got my big scissors out. And don't worry if it's not perfect, we can always clean this up later. Perfect, and you'll see that that just pops right off. And you can see that dotted pattern on here. I know it's a little confusing, so we're just gonna keep this handy for when we're stitching so we can make sure to follow it. While I cut out the back side, I'm going to keep in mind that I can adjust this once I've glued the back to the front. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra space just in case. We don't want the side any smaller than the front. Let's clean this mess up. All right. So for these colors, I went ahead and chose a dark blue. This is Prussian blue, black forest green, and Napa red. These are a little bit more of a classic Christmas palette as opposed to this one that is more on the blue side. I put my card on this mat so I don't have to worry about getting any paint on the table. Make sure to give these a good shake. And I like to do about a quarter size dollop of each color to start. All right, now it's time for the fun part. We're gonna get to painting. One thing that's really important is to make sure that we're not filling these holes with paint. So I'm going to be using a lot of water as I go to keep this really soft and blended. We'll start just by getting our paintbrush nice and wet. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead in with this dark blue color first. You can do whatever feels right to you. For abstract paintings, I kind of like to keep in mind weight. So I'll keep one side a little bit darker than the other, and then we can add interest later. And this paint is really fun because you can just keep adding water to blend this out. I'm just going to add a little bit of green, melt it all in. You can see how the water combination just makes it blend really nicely. Since I know I'm going to be stitching in green, I might avoid doing too much green right over where my leaf is going to be. But the fun thing is, is that you can do as many of these as you want and experiment with colors. It's time to bring in that red. <laughs> Let's just fill in this whole middle area with some red, but I'm going to keep this really watery. So we'll just add, keep adding water. We do need to keep in mind that as these colors blend together, they might get a little muddy. So the green and the red will probably want to add a little blue in between so they don't get brown. You can see that this paper is starting to bow a little bit and that's just because of all the water that we're putting on there. But don't worry, we can always just compress it once we're done and it should flatten right out. One thing that I like to keep in mind when I'm doing these abstract paintings is you can see where the water droplets kind of start to bloom out into the color as I go and you can follow those shapes 
and create kind of interesting flows. So you can see this blue has kind of created this blob here. So I'm just going to skirt around that with the red. And then I just want to add a bit more depth to this bottom side. And continuing to kind of, I like this green shape here, so I'm just going to skirt around that. I'm not going to go right into that. I'll keep it nice and bright. Go in with a bit more water. Soften everything up. Hmm, what do you think we should do here in the middle? More blue? More green? What if we combine it and do a little teal? As I approach that red, I'm going to shift right over to the blue instead of the green. Ooh, I like that dark spot right in there. Let's add that in again. Just add more water. If you're ever questioning anything, just add a little more water. Normally, I would keep a cloth handy to wipe my water off, but since this painting is so water heavy, it doesn't really matter. This is just my process of how I think through painting abstractly, but anything that you do will look good too. Just take this as a chance to experiment with paint and color. The technique I really want you to try out is just blending in those colors with the water. So I think before I finish, I'm just gonna go in and add a few drops of water kind of around where I feel like there are gaps. And these are mostly empty. There's a tiny bit of red pigment in there, but that's okay. And then with these little drops, I'm just gonna get a dab of this red and we'll just put Put that right in those drops and those will kind of push push that water out and you'll get some really interesting blends. We're gonna play all sorts of painting techniques for this guy. Properly chaotic. All right, I'm getting to the point where if I keep going, it's just gonna mush together. So let's keep these colors nice and separate and stop. That's right, I said stop. I said stop. Just because I can't help myself, I'm adding just a tiny bit more. So this is a technique that I used on this one as well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a little tiny bit of color on the tip of my brush. And I also have quite a bit of water on there as well. And now I'm just gonna go in and kind of where I see these blends, these colors kind of coming together, I'm just gonna very lightly outline them. And it can be kind of jumpy. This is gonna be pretty abstract. I'm just adding little connection points kind of throughout. And since it's still got quite a bit of water on here, it's gonna blend right in. All right, and before it gets too crazy, we're gonna let this dry. Okay, once that's dry, we're gonna go ahead and start stitching. You can see that this one ended up a lot darker than my last one, but I think it will look really nice with this lighter green thread. This is color 522, and I'm going to go ahead and use all of the threads for this so we won't separate out any, all six. I also wanna make sure that I have my pattern handy as this is gonna help us make sure that we stitch correctly. So I started off by just tying a knot on my long end. I cut off about 40 inches worth of thread, but that might be a little bit much. I'd rather have too much than too little. All right, I'm gonna start at the very top. So we'll start right here and we'll just push it through that little hole that we made. And I can see from my template that just goes right down into this hole. And from here, you're basically just connecting the dots. When I was doing this the first time, I did mess up a couple of times. So I had to pull a few threads out to make it go in the right direction but it's easy enough to do. And the bigger you make your holes when you first punch them, the easier it's going to be to pull the thread through. The first time I did this, I punched a little bit of a bigger hole. So this time I wanted to experiment with a smaller size. Oh, look at that. You can see I already messed up. This is actually the exact spot that I messed up last time. So it's easy enough to undo. We can just pull the threads back out. Unfortunately, I have to go back a few. This is part of the fun though. <laughs> All right, back to it. So I went into this first hole here and I actually need to go into the second one. That first hole is for the sprig on the left. All right, there we go. That's right. From here, I'm just gonna go straight down just to make it a little less confusing as I go. For this, I'm just using a standard back stitch. Great, now that I've got that whole branch in, I think it'll be a little easier to go from here. So we'll start from the bottom up now, moving up to this first side. And there we go. So once I punch this last one through, pull this rogue thread through, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over and we'll just tie this off. I'm using my needle trick where you put the needle right in the middle of the knot, turn it at an angle and then pull tight to get it as close to the paper as I can. And then we'll just cut this off. Be careful not to cut any of our threads. Looking cute. 
Okay, as a final touch, we're going to cover up this back so you can write a little note on it if you want. So that's what this back piece is for. I'm just gonna line it up. Remember, we left a little bit of extra space so that we can line it up perfectly. We'll glue it down first and then we'll trim the edges. So I've got my hot glue ready to go. We're gonna work pretty quickly for this. Mostly just gluing around the edges. All right, this down. See, now I'm thankful I have all that extra space because I put it down just a little bit crooked. But that's okay, looking good. All right, let's let that dry and then we'll trim it all off. So I've got my big scissors and I'm just going to trim right around these edges where my painted side is. Perfect. I hope you enjoyed making these with me. I think they turned out super cute and they were nice and easy. Great for young ones or if you wanna make something personalized but it doesn't take too much time. Since we sealed off the back, this would make a perfect card for the holidays. And you can see that this one is really flat and that's because I just hit it with an iron. So that's a nice little tip for you. I hope you have a wonderful holiday and we'll see you next time.